congregation. Bless the pastor, the first lady. Bless everyone today. I pray that you get what God got for you today. You expecting something. Come expecting. And bless you and honor you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We worship your name in here this morning. Father, we thank you for liberty, freedom, and that chains will fall off this morning. Amen. We expect your glory to fall. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. There is a fountain that drowns sorrow. There is an ocean deeper than fear. The tide is rising, rising. There is a current stirring deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart of God. The flood of heaven crashing over us. The tide is rising, rising.
God in this place this morning. Come on, lift your voice all across this room. You're coming alive today as you worship, so continue to just lift your voice all across this room. The Bible says, for he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So let your worship today show that you're free in this house. Amen. Lord, we bless you all across this room today for your loveliness, for your righteousness, and your holiness. Lord, I will worship you with all that I have inside today, Father. With all that I have inside, Lord.
so faithful, yeah. I will worship you, yeah. Come on, one more time. Almighty God, yeah. Come on, Pastor. Just a congregation. I will worship. 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 You Almighty God. Almighty God. Say we will. We will worship you. Yeah. Yes, we will. Yeah. yeah. Almighty, we will sing. We here on Family Sunday. We declare over our children. We declare over our family that they will run back to you. Yes, we will worship. Yes, we will worship. Almighty God. We will sing, we will worship, we will worship, yeah. we will worship, we will worship, you are mine, with all that I have inside, with all that I have inside, I worship you, yeah, lift your voice. I withhold my praise as I can not withhold my praise from right now I can let things continue as they are in the flow of the service or we can step over to where the Holy Spirit wants us now I just move right off the there's a little bit of a heaviness in here today I'm another level God I'm another level God and there's something to be had for families today is family Sunday I'm just sense of heaviness here today. And, and in a song like this, I will worship. That needs to be every one of our cries. But if
if I can just get one person to represent every household. Now, I wish everyone would step in, but if I can get one person to represent every house in here today, especially my men, especially my men in here today, you got trouble in your house, in your family. There's another level for you today. Let's step over this worship. Pick up this beat. This thing is alive here today. Let's let a flow of God come in your house here today. I need at least one worshiper for every house. There, there may be more of you got more good. But I need one worshiper for every house. Pick the beat of this thing up. Go with, with it. All I have, with all that I have inside, I worship you. his reach for your household. I feel something. John the Baptist came preaching repentance. 
repentance. He said, if you'll turn, change your thinking today. He said, the kingdom of God is at hand. What did he say? It's within God's reach. The kingdom, the manifestation of the dominion and the influence of God is available for your household. It's within His reach. I wish somebody shout out and said hand. I wish somebody shout out and said hand. I feel this. I feel this. Father God, I come against every generational curse. I come against every generation of people. I oppose every work of the enemy over every household standing. If that's you and you but get loud, get real loud right now. Talk for your household sake. Talk, talk for your household sake. I come against every work of the enemy. I boldly declare today that thing they're desiring that they need in their house is within your reach. So, Father, all around this altar today are people who are reaching out to you. I remember the words of Isaiah the prophet. He said, "In the anointing shall destroy every yoke and shall remove every burden." So I pray for the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit in every household, reaching loved ones. We may not be able to reach your heart, but you can. Father, all through this place today, we rejoice in the God of our salvation. We cast the whole of our care over upon you, for you care for us. Father God, I just thank you for the hand of God. Your word said that your ear's not heavy, that it can't hear. You don't get tired of hearing us. Your arm's not short that you can't save. It's within your I feel this. I, I pray you'll see this. I pray you can see this. It's, it's within its reach. So, Father, I pray for the progressive walk of God and for the prayers and petitions that are in the hearts of people all around this altar. Wanting, desiring, believing for so many different things. I pray here today, Father God. By the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit, you would give them the desires of their heart. And there was a lamb slain for every house. Thank you for the work of God. I, I said this to somebody just now, but I, when Pastor was up here praying, I sensed this prayer for the, those that are single, divorced, or widowed. Within God's reach is His ability to help you be head of your household. That you'll not experience one single lonely day if you allow Him to reach down into your household and help you. He wants to help you. He wants to help bring finances into your house. He wants to help bring comfort into your house. He wants to be that person that you may need beside of you. He wants to be that one. Let Him reach into your household. And if you're single here today, let Him be the one that helps you select the right one for your household. Let Him be the one that brings that good man or that good woman to your household. And you'll never complain a day of your life if you do. He wants to reach down into your household today in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit and all of our hearts aligning us, crowning our lives with length of days and quality of life. 
Father, your word says in Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30, Come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest for your souls. You'll find rest here. So breathe in real deep around this altar. Breathe in real deep. Let the atmosphere of his rest in the presence of heaven fill your life today. Father God, I completely totally concur in everything that you have given Colette to say. I completely and totally agree. And we just receive that for every area, every hour of our life. No matter what their family looks like, what their family season is, their family form is, in that family, wrap your arms around them and care for them. We bless you for this in Jesus' name. And every believer said, y'all receive that here today. Every need in your house in Jesus' name. Casting a hold of your cares upon him for he cares for you. Amen. You got two minutes to get out and greet one another. somebody who may be new here today. Go greet someone different here today. in the foyer to pray for things after the service but I know those things were specifically addressed by the Holy Ghost during the service prophetically I'm not making this stuff up I hear the Holy Ghost say something and I'll just speak it I give utterance to it into the atmosphere and everyone who wants it you can have it but you have to believe the words that are spoken prophetically so shall you prosper. The way you receive it, the way you believe it, the way you receive it, the way you process that will determine how that manifests in your house. So when the Lord says his, his plans are prevailing for you, if you need that in your household, you ought to say something. Out of the abundance of the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart. 
the mouth speaks. It says something. And man, I just think God's just pouring out supernatural things into the atmosphere. A very unique atmosphere here at Jubilee Christian Center. Right? And God, I look forward to coming to church. <laughs> I hope you do too. I love being with you all. Praise God. And we got better in front of us. If, we have, if we've got a capacity to, to go into the greater, God certainly got it for every one of us. Amen. You have a capacity for the greater in your life. Amen. Praise God. We welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We want to greet our first time guests here today. If, we are, if you're here for the first time at Jubilee Christmas, if you lift your hand up, we have a packet we'd like to give you. Our first time guests, you lift those hands up, keep them up until we, until we have opportunity to get to you. Thank God for every one of you. Thank God for every one of you. Inside of that packet is a card. Take your time, fill it out, put that in the offering container. It gives us a record of your visit. And at the conclusion of today's service, someone on behalf of the ministry would like to speak to you for a few moments, answer any questions that you have, speak blessings on you. In Jesus' name, please come back, make yourself right at home. Receive here in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I just love that song. Thank you, Lord. Well, good morning, JCC family and friends. Uh, I am, I am. Today's announcements are on Wednesday, April the 10th at 6.30, there will be prayer encounter. Yes. On Thursday, April the 11th at 8.15 a.m., the Men's Mentors Corner yes. at Pizarro's in Radford. On Thursday, April the 11th as well at 6 o'clock, all women are welcome to join a Better Me, a workout class available for all ability levels with Miss Megan. On April the 20th, on Saturday, April the 13th at 10 o'clock a.m. is our Women of Royalty. So women, this is a time for us all to come out and fellowship and have a good word. Listen to First Lady giving us a good word for the morning. On April the 21st, at 9.30 a.m., join us for our coffee and donut in the coffee shop prior to service. On Saturday, May the 11th at 5 p.m., JCC's third annual women's dinner. Women come and enjoy a meal cooked and served by our men. Women, please sign up to attend. Men, please sign up to serve. And we have that in the back of the church at the table. If you're interested in participating in the Easter play, please see Amy Carden. On May 4th, we will host a community baby shower. Check the greeter's table for a list of items of donations needed. If you would like to help with the events, please see Megan Hash. If you would like to join our dance ministry, please see Carolyn Slaughter. Parents, every third and fourth Sunday, there is a parenting class available for you to attend beginning at 9.30 a.m. And for our birthdays and anniversaries, on the 8th is Patrick and Amy Carden's anniversary, Dr. Philip Godot's birthday on the 10th, Craig Hodge on the 10th, Kay Tyler on the 10th as well, Miss Phyllis Baldwin on the 11th, Satarika Hendricks on the 11th, Courtney Stewart on the 11th, Jean Butler on the 12th, and Wally Flincham on the 12th. We just want to wish everyone a happy anniversary and a happy birthday. You all have a blessed Sunday. Thank you. Good morning, JCC. So I'm here to tell you guys some exciting news about the community baby shower. We already have... 40 mothers who have responded that they want to come. Yes, I'm so excited. Like, pro excited is probably an understatement. Um, so right now, we are only taking 40 mothers to come to the shower that day. However, if we have more mothers who call us or contact us that they, you know, are in need of anything, what we're going to do is start a wait list. So what we really need to do now is make sure that we get enough items donated or people sponsoring mothers so that every mother walks away out of here with the same amount of material. So diapers, wipes, lotion, shampoo, you know, all the goodies that come with having a baby. Um, but I do want to share a quick testimony with you all as well. I had one last week, so I've got another great one today. Um, I was very fortunate to speak to a mother. Um, she called just wanting to get on the RSVP list, and then I got to talking to her, and she said, you know, I'm actually on my way to Roanoke to go stay at the Ronald McDonald house because my son is in such 
such need right now. He was transferred to Roanoke um, to the NICU there. And I said, oh, I understand. I said, I stayed at the Ronald McDonald House when my son was born. I said, so I understand. It's a great place. They're going to take great care of you. You know, just trying to encourage her because it's a scary time. Um, and so she, she was going on telling me about, um, he was having just seizure after seizure. He was a micro preemie. So he was born extremely early and they didn't have much because he was born so early. They were not expecting him to be born as early as he was. And, um, he was just having seizures. Brain activity was extremely low. He was not eating anything. So I talked with her. I prayed with her for a long time. And um, I said, you know, if you don't mind, I would love to call you, you know, within the next couple of days, just check in on you, how you're doing. You know, if you need prayer, we can pray again, you know, whatever it is. And I just really felt connected to her because, you know, y'all know Trey's story. So there was a connection there automatically. And so that, that was on, I think, Wednesday. So I think Thursday, I ended up calling her back around sometime in the afternoon. And she went, when, they, when, I, when they called and they got back a hold of me, she said, I am so glad I'm talking to you. And I said, oh, you sound so good. You know, she sounded almost hopeless the day before, right? There's that hopelessness that you can hear in people's voice. But when I talked to her the next day, she sounded just like a breath of fresh air. And she said, my son is like a different child. And I just, I didn't know what to say at first. I was like, what do you mean he's a different child? So then she goes on to tell me brain activity was almost normal. He was eating more than they expected him to eat. And when I talked to her the day before, they didn't have a release date. Um, Being a micro preemie, it's probably extremely difficult to give a release date, especially if the child's not eating. Um, And that day when I talked to her, they gave her a release date of seven to 10 days. And that's just incredible. Like, that's just God, right? That's just nothing but God. And she thanked me so many times, like, over and over for just giving her the opportunity to call and to talk and to pray. And I just, I just want to share that with you all because we're not just providing diapers. We're not just providing wipes. We are providing hope in Jesus. And that's what it's all about. So I really want to encourage you. If you want to be a part of this, I want you to be a part of this. Let me know what you want to do and I will put you to work. You can come that day. You can pray with us. Um, probably that morning before the women get here, we're going to get a group together to pray over all of the things. Um, If that's something that you want to jump in on, please let me know. Um, God is so good, and let's just share his goodness. So thank you all. Do you want me to share that part? Okay. Okay, so along with that story, when I talked to... Okay, so let me preface. So that morning... Do you want me to say the woman's name? Okay. So that morning... So my phone is constantly going off throughout the day, um, you know, with, with moms who are contacting us, you all who are contacting me, what can I do? What do you need? And it's amazing. Like, I love it. Um, But I had, is Lakina Sherman here today? I don't think, she just, she's a a recent new mother. Lakina Sherman, who is a member of our church, she had contacted me early in the morning on Wednesday. And she said, you know, it's really on my heart to donate a car seat. And I was like, oh man, I know how much car seats are. I was like, are you sure, Lakina? Like, she was like, no, I really, I really want to donate a car seat. And I was like, okay. I was like, let me pray about the best way to do this because I'm a, I'm a planner. I like things very detailed and oriented. And in my head, I'm thinking, and we have raffles for the shower. And so in my head, I'm like, how do we give away a car seat? What if mother A already has a car seat, but mother C doesn't have a car seat and mother C could really use a car seat. So in my head, I was trying to figure out how to work it. So I said, "Ah." I said, let me get out of my head. Let me take some time and pray about it. And then we'll figure out how we can utilize this blessing. So I said, okay, Lakina, I'll I'll let you know later today how we're going to do this. So then fast forward to like four hours later, and that's when I get the phone call from that mother. And I didn't mention to the mother that I had, you know, a member who was interested in donating a car seat. I didn't bring that up to her. But just through conversation with that mom, she said, you know, because my my son was born so early, we don't have anything for him, not even a car seat. And I said, oh, I got you. I said, God's got this. Like, I was so, like, in the inside, I wanted to scream. I wanted to be like, you have no idea what I have for you. Like, I just was so excited. Like, I just could not. But I didn't tell her at that time. I said, I said, okay, you know, I, work. I said, I'm going to get you on the list. We're going to get you a bunch of stuff. We're going to take care of you. We're going to cover you in prayer. We're going to cover your son. And I said, okay. And so then when I got off the phone, I, I, like, ran to first lady's office. I was like, you're never going to believe this. So, I, so then I got back on the phone with Lakina. I said, Lakina, I said, you're never going to believe this. I said, I really think God laid it on your heart to get this car seat for this mom. Like, y'all don't understand. Like, God lined that up. Like for Lakina to call me that morning and then for that mom to call that afternoon, that's not me. That's, that's God, right? Like that's totally God. And so I, um, Lakina went out that day, y'all, 
and had that car seat here at the church Wednesday night. Like, so we have it in our possession. It's not a, it's not a, just a dream that's, no, it's here for this family. So then the next day, and it was, um, it was late, so I didn't call that mom back that day. So I called her back the next day when I was talking to her and she was telling me, you know, how miraculous it was that her son was turning around health wise. And I said, well, I have some good news for you too. And I said, I really want to share with you that we have the ability to bless you with a car seat. And y'all, I wish I could have recorded her reaction because it was pure thankfulness. Like the sound of her voice, the weeping in her, I mean, it was, you know, tears of joy. And if you, if you could have just heard her, you guys, and it's, and it's because of the heart of the family at at Jubilee Christian Center. I tell people all of the time, we have the most incredible people here at Jubilee Christian Center. We truly do. And it's, and it's all because that you all have opened your hearts to God. And because of that, you're able to open your hearts to people. And because of that, we are able to bless families who are truly in need. So thank you. And Lakina, if you're watching, thank you. I love you. And, um, just keep, you know, if something's on your heart to bless somebody, don't push it aside. Truly let God use you to bless somebody because we have the ability to change that family's life. So amen. Thank you. Y'all got me crying up here all the time. Amen. Praise God. I pray God that, I, that every one of you will get so free that you rejoice in every good thing that God does in somebody else's life. Amen. Just as if it happened for you. Don't get so lost in your own need and your own deficits in your life that you can't rejoice in the good thing that's happened for somebody else. Because if God did it once, he'll do it again. Amen. God will do it for you. Amen. The Bible tells us that over in Romans 12 chapter said you weep with those that weep and rejoice with those that rejoice. How many of you have got something good that God's done in your life? Every time in here, put your hands up. God's done something good for you. <clears throat> every one of you here today, I rejoice with every one of you. And I'm believing and I'm thanking God for the good work and the stuff he's got in the process. Stuff that's in the meal for you. It's in production. It's in process. Where if you have y'all believe it here today. We got any people here of those kind of people that thank God in advance? That's what Prophet Seville says. says, thank him in advance. Thank him in advance. Before the doctor confirms it. Before it's in your garage. Before it's in your checking account. Before. Come on now. We thank him in advance. We thank him in advance. We thank him in advance around here. People of faith. We roll like that. Amen. Praise God. Now, you, and you got some stoic place, you have some stoic people in households, but every, every household needs at, one, at least one person that they have to tell them, sit down. <laughs> Man, if you're one of those quiet kind, God can deliver you from that. <laughs> Somebody shout out, like they used to say, he's a deliverer. He's a deliverer. He can deliver you from, well, I'm, I'm quite like that. Man, God can help you. Have you ever thought about getting help for that? Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. God is good. God is good. God is good. You got stuff going on right now. You know, right now, all you sports guys, and most of you not even sports people know, right? You got March Madness going on now with basketball, this, that, and the other. I look how excited people are, this, that, and the other. About everything going on there, praise the Lord. Let me say this. There should be nothing to compare in your life like your love for Jesus and what God's doing. There should be nothing to compare to it. Nothing to compare to it. Like your love for Jesus and what God is doing. Amen. You'll be more excited about that than anything else going on in your life. Y'all believe it here today. Y'all receive it here today. Praise God. Amen. Tell somebody about Jesus. Never underestimate your story. Somebody needs to hear your story. God's done something for you that will help somebody get out of what they're going through. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout out and say, get vocal. How can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach except to be said? Hallelujah. It's offering time. We have opportunity to sow and to give. I think that we believe God to prosper your supernatural. We have supernatural things going on in our lives, our people's lives, because we believe for it. It's not, it's not magic. It's just practicing the word. You do the word, you practice the word, you get what the word promises. And you practice your obedience towards God in your giving. God promised you certain things, corresponding returns, and he promises that, that so you can give again. So you can give again. Offering time is not a time to close your heart. It's a time to open up your heart. If God taught you about seed, it's because he's got, he's got harvest in mind. He is our Heavenly Father and He is our provider. 
We've had so many good things that have happened in the lives of our people. We believe that you'll always have everything that you need to do whatever God puts in your heart to do. Amen. Father, this is the time and extension of our worship here. We bless you and thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Making out checks, make them pay with JCC at Jubilee Christian Center. I'll tell you what Colette and I do, and this will help people in processing this in the office. If you'll take time, if you'll take time, fill out an offering ahead of time, fill out ahead of time, make it legible, put the information on there. It real for the record keeping, it makes it a lot quicker process for us. Thank God for your giving. Stand your feet for all the rest of the ushers. Let's bless the Lord with our giving. Amen. Hallelujah to the King. him as our provider let not any of us ever think that we'll look at what we've done by the power and the might of our own hand for every good and every perfect gift it comes down from above for the lord he is my shepherd and i shall not want father we lift up these times and offering double expressions of love today to the hands of our high priest the lord jesus who has created a covenant relationship between us and god because of his obedience unto death at the cross by the spilling out of his own blood, precious blood. And we thank you today, Father, for that blood. By the Holy Spirit, we call you our Heavenly Father. Father, receive the giving of your people today. May it minister to you, may it be a sweet-smelling sacrifice in your very nostrils. We pray today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you will meet every need of everyone soaring and giving you today whatever measure of their obedience. In Jesus' name, we ask you to move today in their life in a supernatural way. I hear the word rescue. I ask you to rescue every person here today that needs to be rescued. I pray that they will recognize your voice when you call us to make adjustments. Wisdom is the principal thing, not always more money, but wisdom. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the wisdom of God to increase in every way. I pray that every member sitting here today, everyone standing here today, on the cell of our voice who has the capacity to receive it, will receive the wisdom of God for increase into every area of their life, in Jesus' name. And grace to make adjustments, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, Father God, we command this seed today to go and to grow and harvest. We'll see you real soon. Hold that for just a moment. Yeah. I love you. 
like that. I like that. The blessing, the blessing, the blessing, the blessing, the blessing, the blessing. Praise God. Thank God. Yeah, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Today's Family Sunday. We just got back from California and, man, we didn't get a, we didn't get a whole lot of sleep. So, we'll get above it. You see me, I'm in here praising worship, but I ain't dragging around like I'm in my pajamas. We have not had much, we have had not had much rest. But, you know, I'll tell you what, you know, you receive by the, the man that you put on the anointing. And I just feel there's something to be had here today. Don't you walk away here today without being changed. There's too much here. When we were coming up, this is what they told us. When we were coming up, you had to eat when it was on the table. We couldn't come take it out of the refrigerator. Some of y'all may think that's radical, but we're very disciplined and all of us kids turned out pretty good. We had to eat when it was on the table. We didn't come in and one of them wants chicken nuggets, the other wants pizza, the other wants stir fry. No, no, no. You eat what is on the table when it is on the table together. And that's what I'm telling you today. Eat what's about to be put on the table. Amen. Let's do it together. And uh, I just think as you open up your heart, God does supernatural things. Just supernatural. Y'all believe it here today. Somebody shout out, say, I serve a supernatural God that does a supernatural in my life. Amen. Praise God. We got back and uh, we we're Dr. Godot and everyone was out there for his 70th birthday party. And for those of you who don't know, Dr. Godot is a spiritual father and a mentor in my life. It's been an incredible blessing for me uh, and Colette. He and, he and mom Godot, Brenda Godot, have been a phenomenal blessing. We're out there. We need to get them back in sometime to minister again. They were... Uh, this is what happened. There's a nepotism. I want to talk to you about this here today. I want to talk to you for just a moment. I just want to pour out. How many of y'all are ready to get into the blessing flow? Amen. Now, now, if you want to keep status quo on life support and keep struggling around, but if you want to get in the blessing flow, I'm talking to you. If, if you want to get in the blessing flow, then open your mouth and say something right now. Amen. This is what happened with us. Tyrone and Tyrone and Gary Lewis were out doing it. Tyrone's playing in the band. Gary Lewis is fighting in clubs. See my doing on MMA. I was getting rumors about that and dance contests and stuff in clubs. You know, he's fighting and stuff. And, and, um, and some of this stuff that flows in his life, sometimes, sometimes stuff flows in your children's life. There's nothing to brag about. See, when I, when I came up, you know what they called me? Hands. You know what that came from? Fighting. I put the hands on you. I put the hands on you. And before I got saved, and that's where, that's where I was. How many of y'all been delivered from some stuff? Yeah. Amen. The person, how many of y'all people sitting beside those people just raise their hands up? Thank God they've been delivered from some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> those varying levels of deliverance. And uh, some of that stuff comes in the family. I never even talked to them about that. I walked into a, uh, I walked into a nursery in Pulaski, and I've told about all this. So they called me hands, man, because I'd, I'd go upside your head. Man. I wouldn't look for fights. I just ended them. <laughs> And we were standing there. This was all before, somebody say, before Christ. All this before Christ. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't make me go there now. Don't, 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 don't. I was in a nursery in Pulaski. This guy walked up to me. I would seen this guy in 30-some years. He worked at Coleman's. How many of y'all know where Coleman's Furniture is in Pulaski? It used to be. And this guy walked up to me, and he said, hands. This was from 37 years ago. He called him one time. He came... <laughs> It's of 37, it's 37 years ago. And I remember one time I was, I was talking, I was talking to Tyrone and Gary Lewis about this one time. And God really dealt with me about this. I'm about to get into a prophetic flow. I'm about, to, I'm, 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 I'm stepping over into a, a shallow water, into deeper water right now. And there's times we brag about stuff that's actually generational curses. And there was times and uh, Tyrone and Gary Lewis was coming up, had a little girlfriend, little girls liking them, this, that, and the other. And I said, yeah, I got that hash. I said, you got that hash curse on you. Got that hash curse on you. They, they, they love them hash, man. And uh, <laughs> until God talked to me one day about that. Until God talked to me about one day about that. And he's got me. He gets my attention. I listen to him. I listen to his voice. And he said, You're, and by the time God, God got through talking to me, I'm sitting there crying. 
He said, you're speaking, you love your boys. I said, yeah, I love them. He said, well, you're speaking a curse. Mm-hmm. You're declaring that they're going to leave some woman's heart broke somewhere. That they'll walk in and walk out of their lives. God dealt with me about that, man. And I said, and I said, don't talk to y'all, I don't know if I remember that. I said, don't talk to him about that. I said, son, I declare in Jesus' name that you'll find the woman that God's got for you and she's the only one who'll satisfy you and you'll stick with her all the days of your life. You'll have eyes for her and she'll have eyes for you. And the woman that recognizes you will be the one that needs to recognize you and you'll recognize her by the eyes of the Lord. And we we brag around about stuff sometimes that we don't need to be bragging about. We don't need to be bragging about. You teach, teach, teach your girls to stay pure and teach your little boys to be players. How's that working out? You ought to tell your boys to stay pure too. And keep their lives right. Amen. I could use some other language there. I could use some other language there. Amen. Let's go and confess a word here. I'm ready to hit the floor with my feet running. Amen. Praise the God. We're going we're gonna to get the blessing flowing in your family. Today's family Sunday. I will get the blessing of God flowing in your life. Amen. Praise God. There's a recoverer here in the house. The one who promised that the year of the canker worm will be restored to you and that rust have destroyed. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I believe within it is the power to change my life. I believe in my heart. Therefore, I confess with my mouth that today, this day, after having heard the word of God, my life will be changed forever. Never again the same. Never, never in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah to God. I want to talk today and ask you this question here today is, is how have you been defining your family? Everything is defining us with something here. And I had something this morning. I was up and I was praying here. Even though I had, we hadn't had that much rest. I mean, we were up real late. On, we got there late on on Thursday night, late on Thursday night, back up on 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 Saturday, we was having some noise there in the room above us, and we didn't, didn't get a whole lot of rest. And then we was after part, the birthday party at night, went late, and we was back out for what, what four o'clock or before that morning to catch the flight, and was flying all day and stuff, you know. And then got in bed late last night and back up early this morning. Hey, Lord, had me up early this morning. I haven't had a whole lot of rest, but guess what? I'm ready, Freddy. I'm ready to go. Amen. And we're here, and I just want you to open up your heart and let God do something supernatural in your life. There was a, I wrote something in this morning, man, it was just about the Holy Ghost. I was up and I was praying. Some of you read a number, number of people have responded to it. It was, a, it was a, 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 something God put on my heart, something God put on my heart this morning um, to share when I was up in prayer. It was just the most amazing thing. This is what I wrote. I said, I've been up for a couple of hours praying and I just feel the Spirit of God speaking to me. In fa- How many of y'all have read this this morning? Speaking to me emphatically to share this with you. Don't let one evil day, one horrible event, one really bad choice, one hard season, one heartbreak, one disappointing failure define you for your whole life. Better is one day in his courts than 10,000 elsewhere psalms 84 verse 10 don't be elsewhere when you should be in his courts get in church somewhere today in the presence of god and get your life moving glory to glory amen really felt that and I, there's oftentimes we uh, god is not calling you by what happened to you god's not defining you by what you've been through matter of fact if, you, if it, and most of the time people are not really going through in it Sometimes you have, to, you have to really watch this and as families and all families go through something. And I'll speak to every family here today, whatever form or season you're in. I'm talking to blended, extended families. I'm functional, dysfunctional families. I'm talking to every one of you, a single parent mom, single parent dads, whatever, whatever your situation is, in between relationships. I was, but just, I want, you, can minimize, you can minimize drama in your life if you'll follow the, the plan and the pattern that's given to us in the word of God. You can minimize. How many of y'all would like to minimize the drama and cut out, you know, people said the school of hard knots is the best teacher. I, I, I sorely disagree with you, my friend. The Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing, not the school of hard knots. Experience is not the best teacher. 
Experience can get you broken up, and I've seen some people never recover from it. And it was out of that that I made that statement this year. You don't have to look like what you've been through all your life. You don't have one. And I've seen this. I don't know in the ministry. We've had so many things. I'm, is it all right if I break curses in here today? Am I in the, am I in the right place? Is it all right if I shut down the curses today and get the blessing activated in your life? In fact, you say something in this place. I need you to talk right now. I don't know the number of times that I've talked with people and they'll talk about one event. They'll talk about one event or something that's happened in their life. And their life was changed forever. And they never, never got back on track. I, talked, I was talking with a couple one time. And this, this is one of the first times I heard this. I wasn't their pastor. Then this, I was traveling full time in the ministry. I think then transitioning out of secular employment. And I was sitting, I was talking to this lady. And she said if she had sent her son away to Bible college. He went away to Bible college, and man, he was raised up in a Christian. He was raised, raised up in church. Raised up in church. And we're not just raised to call, raise good children. We were, raised, we're called to raise godly children. And there's a difference. It's not about them just doing a bunch of good stuff, because they can do a bunch of good stuff in front of you. And publicly. But when they're godly children, it will keep them, even when they're out of your presence. And she sent him away to Bible college. She sent him away to Bible college, went here to Bible college, man. And he got out there and got involved in drugs, a lot of stuff. He's at Bible college. I mean, just because you send a child to a Christian school, that mean it, doesn't mean it, it dots every I and cross every T for you. It gives an opportunity for certain dynamics to be operating for you. But wherever you go, you need to put the right stuff in them. When you can't isolate them, you need to insulate them. And um, she said, and they, had, they got into a cycle financially. And he just, I just set him in a cycle. I just didn't, didn't, they never came out of it. The dad's passed away now and, 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 the, and the mom aged from that thing. It is what she never, she looked for the rest of her life like what she had been through. And I'm telling you here today, you do not have to be defined by what's happened to you. If dysfunctionality has, from the, has framed and woven the fabric of your family experience here today, there's hope for you. And it's in the Word of God. There's hope. Amen. There's hope for you. You can turn that. I don't know how many times I've talked to people. I've seen certain people meet certain people, get certain people into their lives, and they're never the same after that. Of course, I'm talking about bad, bad influences. You know, Proverbs, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 said, don't you be deceived. Don't be deceived that evil communication and association, are going to, they're going to corrupt your morals and your, your patterns of your life. And, but God wants a, a flow of the blessing in your life. God wants a flow of the blessing in the family. Family was God's idea, whatever form, whatever fashion, whatever that means to you. Like I said before, blended or extended families, whatever. But that was really on my heart here today. And, you know, there was, a, there was a young guy in Pulaski who had went to school with Gary Lewis. He went to school with Gary Lewis and he had, uh, I think it was a year ahead of Gary Lewis. It, either Gary Lewis or Mitchell was in the car with me. We were coming from a men's meeting, I think, maybe on Saturday morning, I'm not sure. We are coming back through there, and this young man had hung himself. He was a year ahead of Gary Lewis in school. He had hung himself. And that little, little house there, a little beautiful little home there, man, it's been families in there. They've had so many family reunions. They've had family reunions in there, created a lot of good memories. They've had some wonderful experience, life experiences and things in there. But then all of a sudden, I'm calling that house the, where, the home where the boy hung himself. And I'm doing what I've been calling other people guilty of. I'm labeling something about what it's been through. Child of God, you have a bigger identity than what happened to you. God is not calling you by what happened to you. God's not calling you by any shortage, any generational deficiency, any incident, anything that's happened in your life, any heartbreak in your life. And there's a place in a place in your life where you can turn it. How many of you believe it here today? God's plan for the family's blessings always been. Psalms 90, verse number 1. It was one of the greatest statements you'll ever hear. Is that you, and everyone needs to start declaring this over your family, over your house. Moses made the statement. Oftentimes people think that, that David wrote every, every book in the Bible. He did. There are several authors in, in Psalms. There are several different authors. And you need to look at the head of most of those passages. It'll tell you who the author is of that particular passage that Psalms in there. Psalms 90, verse number 1. He said, Lord, you have been our dwelling place. Throughout all generations. Throughout every generation of my family are calling God their dwelling place. And what, what a what, isn't it a beautiful declaration, a declaration of faith. And uh, God wants his blessing, God wants his blessing flowing in the life of every person, every family here today. If you turn with me to Hebrews, the 12th chapter, we're going to talk about this thing here today. 
We had our uh, the men's meeting last month, and man, it was a, how many of you guys were here last month for the men's meeting? It was a powerful time, wasn't it? Wasn't it powerful? If it was, say something. Amen. We got in there and we prayed. We got in there and we prayed. Uh, this was the thing that the Lord said, but we're going to look here in just a moment in this in Galatians 6, right now in Hebrews 12. Uh, while was had the men praying, what was the terminology? For the most burdensome most burdensome faults in the other men's lives. Praying that they would be recovered from the burdensome faults and the shortcomings that they have in their life. Deficiency that they have. It was a, what, what a, man, what was a, it was a strong atmosphere in there. Man, those, ling, those men there hooking up in there in that room. Oh, God, it was strong. Amen. And God's doing something powerful in our midst. How many of y'all realize that? God's doing something powerful here in our midst here today. And I believe something supernatural is about to happen in your life right now. Amen. What's been defining your family? Here in Hebrews 12, chapter verse number 1 said, Wherefore, seeing that ye also are compassed round about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Look at this here. Matter of fact, this reads better in the Amplified Classic tra uh, Translation. I'd rather pull this up out of there. I'll go ahead and read this. I'll go ahead and read this right now. But I'm going to pull up and read it to you out of Amplified Classic. It's, it's powerful. It reads over there. Wherefore, seeing that you all, we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Look, look, look at this. Let us lay aside... Talk to me. Every weight. And what? And the sin with doth so easily beset us. And that thing jumped off the pages at me this morning. So what sin are you talking about? You know what sin I'm talking about. The one that so easily seems to get access to trip you up. He said the one that besets us. Weaknesses. You have transgressions, which is. Which is the breaking of a law or an established law or a rule. I believe that Ten Commandments. What you said, we're redeemed from the Ten Commandments. Oh, is that oh, so we can kill people now? No, that's y'all. You're missing the point. It said, if you mature in the love of God, you'll keep all of the Ten Commandments. We're not redeemed from the Ten Commandments, but transgression is to break an identifiable established law or rule. Number two, you have uh, you have sin, which is a nature and a lifestyle. The Bible says all unrighteousness is sin. That which is not done in faith is sin. Thirdly, I want to look at this here today, is iniquities. And that's generational. And I'm going to tell you, God is a redeemer of households. Here today. And I'm declaring that in your house and in your life here today. And that's what he said over here. He said, he said the sin that doth so easily beset us and cast inside every weight. Here it is. Here it is. The Amplified Classic Translation reads this way. It said, therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, you who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, every unnecessary weight. And that sin which so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us. And let us run with patience, endurance, and steady and active persistence. The appointed course of the race that is set before us. Oftentimes we have, we have things that are prevailing in different families. And if you don't watch, if you don't watch, you'll make excuses for generational curses. You'll make excuses for things that you ought to be casting off. You'll be making excuses for things you ought to be finding and discovering the truth of the word. And what God has to say about it. Jesus said, if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. What's been operating in your family, in your household? Is it poverty? Is it dysfunctionality? Is it anger? Is it violence? Is it sexual lust? What operates in your family? I said this here a few Wednesdays back here, Wednesday night prayer encounter. And oftentimes you hear people say this sometimes, and I know I sense by the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you this question here today. Watch, watch up. How many of you have certain physical health problems that run in your family? Not a person here raised their hand up. I know this. I know, I know better than that. How many of you have certain physical things that run in the health of your family? And those that want to tell the truth, value the truth, lift your hand up right now. Runs in the family. And you'll hear people say sometimes cancer runs in my family. And, and that, that, that makes it acceptable. I'm a child of God. Don't wear something that Jesus wore for you on the cross. Don't wear something that Jesus wore for you on the cross. 
I got something that runs in my family. The glory of God runs in my family. <laughs> Flip Wilson used to say, what you say? I said, the glory of God runs in my family. Prosperity runs in my family. The blessing of God runs in my family. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, you need to kick this functionality to the curb. And I'll tell you what, and what's so hard about it is this. People who, people who, who have uh, poor self-esteem issues will look for people to cuddle with them and make, make them comfortable sometimes in their, in their uh, dysfunctionality. When the truth is, you need somebody who loves you enough to tell you the truth. Amen. And it's at the point of correction that we come to a point where there's hope for change in our life. Amen. Isn't that good? you got to admit that you need help. Let me ask you a question. How many of you here today, if the Holy Spirit identifies something to you, that you have the ability and the capacity and the desire to make changes in your life? If he talks to you about something. How many of you here today? Lift your hand up. Say something. If that's you here today. And dysfunctionality. God wants to just totally just drive it out of your life. Poverty. How many of you have got that? It runs through your family. Poverty. Insufficiency. Lack. Inadequacy runs in your family. This is true. This is true. Arthritis, cancer, diabetes. Uh, re- what about relationship failure in your life? What about heartbreak? What about loneliness? What about depression? I'm talking to some people in here today. What about rejection? Inadequacy. Poor self-esteem. I'm talking to you. Come out. Come out wherever you are. Don't make excuses for dysfunctional things in your life. All, all excuses do is give your past a future. It keeps, it keeps the misery of your past on life support. Let's take it off life support and let's get over into the place where God has designed all of us to live. Jesus said the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I am come that you might have life. You might have more abundantly. Let me say this to you today. Every person here today, every person here today, I'm keenly aware of this and I've experienced this myself. We were away just this past weekend. And we got really bad news while we were away this weekend. I mean, we were in, in, we were in San, uh, San Francisco for a couple of days. And we got some really bad news while we were there. Something crazy had happened. Something bizarre. Just the hand of the enemy. Child of God, you can't wait until everything lines up to get the peace of God. You need the peace of God in regards of what's going on in your life. Somebody ought to say something here today. The peace of God is not based on facts. It's based on the truth. Truth changes facts. And the fact is, and the truth is here today, that you do not have to be defined by any single thing that's happened in your life. You don't have to be defined by the family you were born in. You don't have to be defined by any generational curse, any inadequacy. You don't have to be defined by that. Dr. Jones was sharing here a couple of months back. He was sharing things I'll tell you. He was sharing things I've never heard before. It just really blessed me the transparency of his heart. Challenges and things. You'd be saying, You had it made all your life. He hasn't had it made. During his mother's pregnancy and the birthing him and was being born into the world. The midwife is telling her to give up on the pregnancy. Is that is that are y'all thankful he did, didn't give up on the pregnancy? They called us from UVA Hospital. Told and my mom, my mom called me. Come get down to UVA. If you hurry up, you may get a chance to see Lenny before he dies. All of his vital organs are shutting down. We're losing him. Everybody in the room with Lenny. They put him in the room to die. Everybody in that room died. Except Lenny. I'm telling you today. I've got bad news before. I've had bad news before. I've had things. I've had stuff hit the. I've had stuff rock my boat. I've had unexpected stuff. I mean, how much time do you have? I've not lived a life that's untouched, unscathed by tragedy. I've had some horrible things. Man, my brother Keith. My brother Keith drowned in Clayton Lake. I told Doctor Jones. Man, from from Clayton Lake to my house is what eight, seven minutes, eight minutes. It seemed like it was two days. Seemed like two days. And for years, the, the stuff we experienced, my dad died just a few years later on. Man, what's my dad doing died on me? And we in the seventh grade. And what happened was I started defining myself by the heart, the stuff I was doing. And after a while, you know what I started thinking? I said, bad stuff happens to us. We must just be really bad people. Bad stuff happens to us. We just must be bad people. Linda came up to us. I'll never forget. Linda came upstairs and sat with us. I'll never forget. 
My daddy complained about his heart hurting all the time. Always complained about his heart hurting. I was, I was tired of hearing it. I was tired of hearing it. A little guy didn't, I didn't understand, just didn't understand. Just tired of hearing it. Until my mom walked through the door today, my brother Harold in with his head down. We lost your, our you children's daddy today. He's gone. We need to learn to listen to people. God's trying to fix people. We need to learn and hear when people are going through struggles and stuff. We had someone just this past week. We had someone just this past week. The mother's always asked me to pray for a son. Always pray for, pray for the son. Always asked me to pray for Well, He killed himself the other day. We've got to, we need to hear when people are talking. People are crying out. Are y'all here? Y'all, are y'all, y'all hear me here today? Y'all catch y'all have heart to care about this here today? Amen. To get a hold, to get a hold of this, man. God's trying to get us in touch with what's going on in people's lives. God wants to bring some healing. There's some stuff in for, for you here today. You've got a broken heart. I've got good news for you. There's an anointing that will heal a broken yeah. heart. And Jesus has seen to it if your loved ones are, 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 have, have passed away and, and passed away. And I've got a number of them. How many of you have got some loved ones over in glory? I've got some loved ones over in glory. And as you get older, you've got more and more people that you love over there in eternal glory. And this is a very, it's a very real thing. But I'm going to share here today for you are here, for those of your family, whatever your family form or fashion or experience is, your season in your life. And I shared all that for not for you to feel sorry. I don't need you to feel sorry for me. I'm clinging to every promise of God. I'm clinging to every promise of God. Man, when I started having, I uh, was sitting in bed one day, my hands started, just fingers start trembling. I'm sitting there thinking, I'm thinking multiple sclerosis and all this different stuff again. And I shut that mess down. You have to answer every unfruitful fig tree with the word of God in your life. You've got to answer that stuff. And just because stuff just runs in your family, man, it's that somebody, it's a child of God, you in a different family, and you in a different tree. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. And you have to impose the will of the word on those circumstances, those situations in your life, and believe God. Somebody say something here today. You've got to impose the will of God. And I want to show you how to do that here today. I want you to turn with me, first of all, here to uh, Psalms, the 46th chapter. Psalms, the 46th chapter is powerful, 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 powerful. Psalms, the 46th chapter. Wonderful example. Perfect example of what I'm talking about here today. You can turn things around. You don't, have to, you don't have to be defined by anything that's happened to you or what any kind of an earthly manifestation, whether natural, spiritual, what have you, in your family. How many of you have got certain patterns that run in your family tree? In our family, all the older, all the hashes are here today. And this is not something, I don't like talking about any of this. The only reason I share this stuff is to give you some hope. That's the only reason I share it. I don't have any joy in sharing any of this. I do it to give you some hope. You don't have to look like what you've been through. You man, some of you got stuff. This, how many of y'all got some stuff connected in your family tree you'd like to get free from? You don't want to be a part of it. Yeah. Amen. Because God loves families. God created families here today. And I'm going to pray the blessing over every family here today. And praise God. In Psalm 46, that God is our refuge. Now look at the top right there before we get started here. If you look at the top right here, it says, To the chief musician, it says, for the sons of Korah, and that is incorrect. That was incorrect. It's simply wrong. If you look beside of that, and how many of y'all have this in your Bible? There's a letter of denotation there, isn't it? What does it say? If you go down to the bottom of your page, or see of your page, it does not say it was for the sons of Korah. It says it was of the sons of Korah. The sons of Korah wrote it, wrote this song. Let's put it in context. You've got to know who's talking to you. Where, who's the sons of Korah? Turn to number six, well, the number 16 chapter. You'll read the story sometime you have time. Kor was, was the man who led the rebellion against Moses in the wilderness. This is the sons of Korah. He was a rebel, but his sons were psalmists unto God. Something happened generationally. Oh, you need to hear me today. That disrupted those patterns. Mental illness. Mental illness running your family, let it be broken today. Yes. You're in Christ now. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us that the blessing of Abraham might come on us through faith. Amen. Yes. Listen, to, listen to what they wrote. For, the, for our God, for God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, pause and think about it. There is a river. That's what the worship team was seeing about today. There's a river. The stream whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the misery. Verse number five, God 
is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. Now, I don't know. Some of y'all like midnight hour experiences. I like God to help me early. There's a place where you can get with God where God's moving in a supernatural way in your life. Something had happened in between generations. From one generation to the next. Let me ask you a question. How many of you here today have, have had some level of success in getting away from some of your predecessing tendencies in generations past in front of you? How many of you have done that? Praise God, I have in our life. That thing with alcoholism and heart problems. When I got in high school, what did I start doing? Drinking. What did I start experiencing physically? Heart problem. Guess what? I'm free from both of them today. You can walk away from that stuff that's in your family tree. God wants your family blessed. Come on, shout out loud. God wants my family blessed. You can walk away from it. Poverty, lack, inadequacy, depression in your life. Child of God, you can walk free from depression. Man, when stuff and things are going on like this whole thing with me, my, my brother, my brother Keith, this and the other, man, I used to not be able to talk about it. Man, I'd be crying out. It wasn't about three years ago. I finally got it down under my feet. I used to not be able to talk. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't talk about it. Man, I said, after all these years, I couldn't talk about it. I finally got it underneath my feet. What happened to you doesn't have to control you. God's not calling you by what was done to you. And what was not done for you. Look at this here. He said these guys came out and they became worshipers. It said the heathen raised the kingdoms were moved. He held his voice and the earth melted. What are you doing? They are describing what they witnessed when God opened up the earth. And their father was swallowed. They took what was a tragedy and a judgment to the generation in front of them. And through their gifting and their new identity, they turned it to a psalm unto God. God wants to take the stuff that was done to you and rid you of the test and give you a testimony. Amen. He wants to take what stuff from stuff has been done for you. God wants to take it and work for you in more eternal weight of glory. If you'll let him touch you where it hurts in your life here today. Every generation, that's one key here. Every generation needs a worshiper. Every household needs a worshiper. Every household needs one person to turn that generation. Now everybody in your house, you may feel like everybody in your house can't be crazy. No, just keep looking straight ahead. Just keep looking straight ahead. Keep looking straight ahead right now. Everybody in your house can't be crazy. But we got to have one worshiper in there. If there's one worshiper in there, we can turn this thing around. Amen. Amen. How many of you have become a worshiper? Some of you have come out of, some of you may have come out of households and things where they grit white, white knuckle chairs. Men don't worship. They look to praise you and worship. But man, if you got one of those hold my mule shouting John guys in every generation that'll give God some praise in their life, that worship praise God in spite of where things are good or bad, happy or sad. Come on, y'all. Let's stay together. <laughs> Smash out on every, every generation. Needs a worshiper. Needs a worshiper. And these sons of Korah had turned it around. Their dad was marked by rebellion. They were marked by worship. They had turned the course of the generation of their life. Let me ask you a question here today. What needs to be turned in your life here today? Do we have any brutally honest people today? You don't have to lift your hand up. You don't have to say anything. Just be honest within your heart. How many of you have got some things traveling generationally in your life that you know need to be turned? You need to come out of just being a renter. Somebody needs to own some property. Paying someone else's mortgage for them. Coming out of dysfunctionality. Never having a man to ever love you. A lot of that comes out of inadequacy. Let me tell you something. You are who God says you are. You'll always, you'll migrate. Man, if people try to talk you down to expectations, so you'll, you'll put up with a trifling hind that. Try to talk down your expectations. Keep looking straight ahead. Keep, no, keep looking straight ahead right now. If you're with somebody right now. Don't let anybody talk you down from your expectations. 
You're worth everything that you're wanting in your heart. Everything that God desires. Keep your expectations high. Keep your hopes high. Keep your hopes high. Keep your vision high in your life. You're bigger and better than what you've been through. You look better. You look better. And you look better than not from this moment forward. You're going to look better than what's happened behind you. God took the children of Israel. Not only did he bring them through the Red Sea. He brought them through on dry, on dry ground. How many of you have ever had your kids come in the house with muddy shoes? What would you ask them? Where? Hey. You've been. God didn't want his kids coming through in mud so that anybody would know what they've been through. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, come out, come out where you are. I'm going to hear that. I want you out of the furnace, but I want more than that. I don't want even want you smelling like smoke. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Every generation needs a worshiper. Romans the fifth chapter, Romans the fifth chapter, verse number of uh, chapter chapter five, Romans five, verse number nineteen, Romans five, verse number nineteen. Say every generation, every generation needs, a needs a worshiper. Romans the fifth chapter, verse number nineteen. Look at this here. Look at this here. Verse eighteen to nineteen. Verse eighteen first. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, Lord Jesus Christ, the free gift came unto all men unto justification of life. Somebody say, thank God, thank God, thank God. Yeah. Verse, nine, verse 19, highlighter, ink pen. Romans 5, verse number 19, highlighter, ink pen. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. I encourage... Every generation, and some of y'all are blessed here today, that's, but it's not everyone's story. If some of you here today, you need to very intentionally decide you're going to obey God with regard to callings and things that he's put on your heart to do. You need to start responding to God. Let me tell you something. Something supernatural starts happening in the family when there's one obedient person in that house. <laughs> Noah, one man, heard God, heard God regard the building of the ark. But it didn't stay with Noah. It saved his whole house through the obedience of one. Men are made righteous. I often tell people this, you parents in here today. Some of you are sitting here may have callings. Some of you put assignments. Some things that God has put on your heart to do. Don't wait for your kids to start getting it all together before you start obeying God. As a matter of fact, if you start obeying God, it's going to give God access to do something supernatural in their life. Somebody give me some Saturday night praise and worship right now. Hallelujah. Somebody in that tree. Got to get their ear up to the heart of God. I'm not waiting for everything to line up in my family. I'm going to give God some holy access to my life. When you do that, you're going to let God put his hand on your family. This is what happened with Dr. Godot. I shared this earlier. So my sons were out running around doing whatever they were doing, you know, before they got, before they got turned on things, God got, in, got in obedience. Y'all describe it the way y'all, what would y'all describe it? Wild. 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 Wildly. Live wildly. Live wildly. I just want to use our words. You can't use their words against me. Wildly. <laughs> this is what happened. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Dr. Goodell's, all of his children were out there. Partying, running around. He's got one of the largest churches in California. They call his church the one, his church, he's the church that ate in northern Sacramento. And his children was just wild. I think we use the term in South Virginia, buck wild. Is it buck wild? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I may have just cussed. <laughs> I mean, I've never had none what that meant. I just don't know, okay? Men, they're out all over the city, man. Crazy. They're bringing men and bringing reproach on this, that, and the other. He got and came in under Dr. Frederick K.C. Price. Dr. Frederick K.C. Price, all of his children was there with him in the ministry function and flowing. And he put into motion something called nepotism. It's extension of favor through the family lines. The thought is this, is that you reproduce what you wonder. Well, I tell people sometimes, I tell, I, if, I tell people, if I tell people about honoring me, showing some respect, getting connected, responding to me properly, blah, 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 I ain't trying to get something from you. I already feel good about myself. I want something to get to you. The blessing of honor. And so you can reproduce what you're under spiritually in your life. You can have it. It's a, it's a principle. 
After he got submitted to Dr. Price, what happened with his kids? All of his kids came in under around him. If he had waited on all of his children around him to line up, he never obeyed the call of God. But he decided he was going to he was going to stick with what God had put in his heart to do. And his children came in alignment around his life. Then what happened to me? When I came in under Dr. Godot, here comes Tyrone and Gary Lewis out of the club. Here comes Andre and Mitchell around. The whole family come out. What, what, what's, the, what's the thought here? You reproduce what you're submitted to spiritually. You reproduce what you're under. So submission is a key principle in your life. You've got to have it. Through the obedience of one. Me to be made right. I know Ray Ray and Pookie and Raymond and Lucy and Luther and Ethel, whatever your experience with us out of town you live on. All of them may be crazy, but for God's got one obedient person in that house. Don't you wait for everything to line up before you start listening to God. If you'll start listening to God, it'll give God access to the rest of your family. Somebody say amen. amen. This is real. This is real. A worshiper. An obedient person. Don't wait for everything to line up for you to get after that call of God that then God put on. Who do you think you are? I'm just another servant of the Most High God. Who are you? Amen. You've got a greater identity in what's happened to you. I've seen people go through foreclosures, financial failures, divorces. Unplanned pregnancies, uh, seasons of rejection, oppression, verbal, uh, verbal abuse, severe ber- verbal abuse, abuse. Went through all that stuff. Child of God, you do not have to be defined by what you experience. Oh, this is real. Amen. Praise God. You can turn that stuff because God's plan is for the blessing on the family. Amen. Number three, turn with me to Psalms 133. Psalms 133. The third one. What's the third one? Agreement. Get agreement in your house. Amen. Your mom, you got children, you know, no dad, you got a dad with no wife, you got children, whatever, whatever your experience is, blended, extended families, start working some agreement in that house. Find something. Y'all don't disagree on everything. That's right. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Can I say something to you? This will help every one of you here today. This will help every one of you here today. I, and I've seen, I've seen this in sports before. I've seen this in sports. When the team starts bickering around with one another or with one another, you got them. They're done. They're dead duck in the water. When they start arguing with one another, they say when couples start insulting each other publicly, their, their marriage is on the rocks. Division. Ooh, rampant division. And you're, you, it's, become, it's become so normal for you at that point. Practicing division. Let me tell you something. You need to get this. Christians take fussing much too lightly. Christians take fussing and division much too lightly. Much too lightly. James, the third chapter, verse number 16, said where there's envy and strife, there's confusion. And every evil work. You start walking out the very nature of Satan that calls Lucifer to get kicked out of heaven. You think you're going to bring up in your crib? You think everything's going to be okay? No. You're rolling out the welcome mat for every evil word. Who in their right mind would call Satan Lord in their life? That's what you're doing when you let strife rule your household. When you have, when division starts, when division starts invading the ranks inside of a home, and one of the things that will help you with that is parents need to live unapologetically about the authority they have in their home. I go everywhere I want you. I look at what you got on your telephone. I can go and I can look. I can look at the condition of your room. Keep your door open. You ain't closing no door open unless you're sleeping at night. You need to close for a little bit of privacy. I can go anywhere in this house I want to. You know. You know. That's the only way you know. It's a matter of fact, some of your parents, you want to know what's going on with your kids? Listen to the music they listen. Listen to the music they listen to. And it'll explain a whole lot in there. I saw a young man here a while back, and you see this, and I see these patterns. I see these patterns over and over. We're starting to glorify, we're starting to glorify and actually present a suicide as if it's a viable option. I guess it's a viable option. 
suicide is and suicide does not condemn a person to hell there's only one sin that'll take a person to hell and that's knowingly rejecting jesus that's the only sin a person to hell now it can get your destiny out of the earth and, uh, prematurely and break the hearts of everyone who care about you and we're right now presenting suicide like it's a, like you have this as this is an option you can end all of this if you do a child of god you need to live out length of days and quality of life in every one of your lives here today we need to usher in God's presence in our life by promoting o- obedience and agreement here in every household. Psalms 133, haven't got, haven't got there. Psalms 133, verse number one. So behold how good, y'all with me? How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. How? It is like a precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that beard that went down to the skirts of the garments, as the dew of Hermon, as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there, there where? Unity. For there, the Lord does what? Commanded the blessing, even life. Forevermore, child of God, rather than you trying to talk God into manifesting the blessing in your life, why don't you go ahead and move your life over there to that place where he's already commanded the blessing. Amen. Keeping everyone in together. I think it's good for parents and families to sit down and talk and about things that God's saying to them, what's going on in your life. Get away from your, I've, I've said this before, we know this. Turn the TV off, so, no, no social media time. We get around and we talk around the table. From time to time, it's so easy for Quilt and I to do. We've got this big screen TV there in the family room. Is that in the, other, the other room. I say, baby, we just want to go to the dining room table. Sometimes we need to get out of those things of convenience and make communication happen. It helps us to stay in agreement with one another and know what's going on inside the house. Somebody say, ma'am. Amen. It's the place of the commanded blessing. Yes. Agreement is the place of the commanded blessing. Yes. That thing of nepotism flowing down like that. And, it's, and the exact same thing happened with uh, Tanya Rojaski, Brianna's mom. Uh, Tanya would come up to me every Sunday. Every, there was the children, she, she remarried, and they got more children. I could call it extended families, I think. It was extended and blended. And uh, they got an even larger family now. Tanya would come up, run up after the service, and meet me right in my face, and look right in my face, and say, Pastor, he said, she said, if I'm confessing it, I'm confessing it today that what's on you is on me. Amen. Your children walk with God. She said, every mind of mine is going to walk with God. Amen. That's every Sunday. Every Sunday she's always confessing that. And I believe that. And she's seen it manifesting in the family. Child of God, if you believe, you receive it. Open up your mouth and say so. Yeah. One of the greatest ways that we, that, we, that, we prove, that we prove agreement in our life is by when we're speaking, by we're speaking the same thing. Not to speak in everybody talking, but ain't a whole lot of talking in agreement. When we start speaking in agreement, let me tell you something. Man, we're awesome. When we're together, man, we're rock. When we're divided, we become the bait of Satan. Christians take fussing much too lightly. That's the reason Paul said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. He said, deal with that. And he didn't say, don't be dissatisfied with something. There's a godly, righteous indignation and anger. There's sometimes we have to work through it. How many of you have had to work through stuff? You have to work through it. But you can't go in insisting on your way. You don't, you're not quiet just for the purpose of waiting for your chance to talk. You actually want to hear what the other person's saying. And there's a huge difference. They're worlds apart. And we got to learn to become good listeners. Y'all get anything from us here today? I'm going to pray this over your family here today. And I really sense this and I felt this here today. I had one more thing I see thrown in. With, just put this down. The blood of Jesus. You need a revelation of the blood. Yeah, the blood. Hebrews 12 chapter, verse number 24. Hebrews 12 chapter, verse number 24. If y'all go and get ready for communion right now. Serve communion today. Hebrews 12 chapter, verse number 24. Y'all get anything out of us here today? Yeah. This, is, this is real stuff. Amen. This is real stuff. It's real stuff. I don't care what you're finding in the situation. You don't have to be defined by what's happened to you. Right. You don't have to be defined by what. How many of y'all have had some bad seasons in your life? Some hard troubles, some hard times before. You don't have to look like what you've been through. That's right. In Hebrews, the 12th chapter, it talks, of, it uses Jesus' blood as a comparison to, to uh, Abel's blood. God said, talked to Cain and said, your, your brother's blood cries out to me. For vindication. For where his brother had murdered him. His blood cried out. But, but here the writer of Hebrews differentiates. 
It says in verse 24, it said unto Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Listen to me. Abel's blood cried out for, gen- for, for, for vengeance. Jesus' blood cries out for your mercy and for your forgiveness. Jesus' blood cries out for your wholeness and your innocence. Jesus took your guilt. He took your shortcoming. Jesus healed a man and told him, he said, now go and sin no more. Lest a greater thing come upon you. Child of God, we need to understand that the blood of Jesus is crying out for greater things. Better things for our lives. Better things. I plead the blood over every family here today. I just want to pray. I just want to pray for every family here today. I'm going to pray for every family. Every family here today. Worship. Obedience. Man, this is so real. Agreement. Revelation of the blood. I pray here today for every house. There are some people really connected with me right now and with the Holy Spirit. And I just pray this over every house. I just pray, Father God, for the blessing of God to flow in every house. I come against and I renounce publicly. Every shortcoming, every fault, every generational curse that has imposed its will, imposed its will on every house in here up until this time. Of whatever type and whatever degree, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that the blood will be applied. The blood applied in every house. And I pray, Father God, that there be a worshiper, an obedient person, a person promoting peace and unity and agreement and the revelation of the blood in every house. And as a result of Father God, Father God, I pray today that you would heal every person in here everywhere that they hurt in Jesus' name. Now, if you're here today and you've been labeled by something that happened to you, I'm praying today that you can go free. That process of freedom will start in you immediately today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. If that's you, say something. And I pray by the power of God you reveal yourself as an ever-present help in a time of trouble. In Jesus' name. Amen. They shout out, was it London? They say, God save the queen. I say, God save every house. God save every house. In Jesus' name. Listen to me here today. Some of you may need to come to a place of acknowledgement of something that's going, it's running in your family line. You need to acknowledge it. And the reason some people will never, it never get free because they won't acknowledge it. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2, he said, The servant of God must be patient after teach, imposing, uh, uh, instructing those who oppose themselves. Peradventure, God would grant them repentance. (laughs) How? Through acknowledging the truth. When you acknowledge the truth, He went on and said, you will recover your foot out of the snare of the enemy. Somebody say, thank God. Through acknowledging it's not always easy. Let me ask you a question here today. Y'all listen to me. The ushers will get these things right. Y'all listen to me. All eyes up front. You may need to find you a confidant somewhere. Someone who's further along than you are. Galatians 6 and 1 said, Ye who are spiritual, restore brother who's overtaken in a fall. And acknowledging there's something that runs in your family and it may already be running in your life too. Multiple sclerosis already in your life, too. You've got some relational issues of sexual promiscuities, other issues and things in your life. And, you, and you've got stuff. It's in the generation in front of you, and it's running on down. Child of God, don't you be ashamed of anything that you're struggling, struggling with. The stuff that you hide, it's hidden from God, but hidden for Satan. 
He'll use it against you. But when you acknowledge it, sometimes you have to be, be honest. Say, you're, I got a problem. I got a problem. I need to get some help. Man, there's power there. Father, I pray all through this place today by the power of the Holy Spirit that the most awesome wave of the integrity of the Holy Spirit would usher us in in the presence of the fragrance of the goodness of God that we'd understand that you are our answer. You're not our problem. You are our Redeemer, our ever-present help in the time of any and all trouble in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for every household today that they, and for every individual here today that they would not look like what they've been through. I pray a special prayer today prior to communion. I pray a special prayer today in Jesus' name. And by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. That you would rescue every person in here today. Who has been held captive. They've been paralyzed. In an incident, a time in their life, something that happened to them. I pray today that they go free. In Jesus' name. Lenny, I need my Bible. Thank you. Thank you, son. Hallelujah. I used to go, uh, I'd get stuff checked. I found out later on, you know, some, if I found out things run in my family, I get my faith out already. They do the natural stuff. If diabetes runs in your family, you watch, watch what you eat. Don't get in fear. Just watch what you eat. I mean, do more than watch it, you know. Adjust your intake. Y'all hear me here today? Adjust your intake and use your faith. Because God's will for you is wholeness. Foggy memory, memory problems, confusion, this and that. No, no, no. Don't accept that. Believe for the blessed Lord. Romans 8 verse number 11 says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. He'll quick and make alive every part of your physical body. It's in the Bible. God's will is hold us for our life. 1 Corinthians 11 chapter. Verse 24. It said when Jesus had given thanks, he break the bread and he take it. Eat this in my body which is broken for you. Broken for you. This do remember to me. Let's break it together. Hallelujah. Let's eat it together. Thank you, Father, for the broken body of Christ and his obedience unto death. Verse 25 said, After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This new year is often as you drink. Drink it in remembrance of me. Let's drink together. Father, we receive everything into our lives that Jesus died to give us. We humbly submit ourselves to the will of God in Jesus' name. Father, we pray today that by the power of the Holy Spirit for your will to manifest, that will of wholeness to manifest in every area of the life of every person here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to acknowledge someone here. Sam in India, would y'all come up here just for a moment? I want to acknowledge Sam in India have been with us here for a number of years. Y'all can sit down. Y'all can sit down just for a second. We're not going to be here long. Sam in India have been here with us for a number of years. Changes in life, transitions, seasons of their life has changed. They're getting ready to move away. It would be an unacceptable oversight of me not to recognize you guys publicly. Remember what I told you in my office? I said, you're the couple that every church wants. Sam and India, I love you guys. We've been together for a long time. I don't take it lightly that you came in and made yourself part of this family. I don't take it lightly at all. I want to thank you all for the blessing that you've had. For your obedience, your support in every way. You guys have led, served, Worship gave you, you did it all. You show up, you're accountable, you're so valuable. And I'm just praying that God will bless you and prosper you and give you a good place to be planted. We receive the harvest back off of you, too. In Jesus' name, 
And if you ever need to come back, you can. Okay, I'm not telling you to come back. Now you know you, you guys, you guys are moving on. You, I think you got to make good decisions. You pray, you pray. If y'all stretch forth your hands, the elders here today, y'all come if you want to. Follow this, this blessing here today. I feel it around you. In Jesus' name, we love these two. They're precious to us. Father, we thank you for Sam in India. Your plans are, your thoughts consistently, past, present, and future are, are good. Go, go ahead of them. Prepare everything for them. Prepare everything for them. In Jesus' name. And out of their obedience and their progressive steps with you, Father, pray that it would flow down through their ranks, their children and their grandchildren. Listen to this, and I'm praying that as you walk with God, that you will see your desire fulfilled in all of your children's lives. That they will walk with the God of their parents. He has become the God and the Lord of their lives too. And then their children, and their children after them, because of Sam and India, and their devotion to God. We send you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, we bless you. God. It was such an absolute blessing. Y'all will love all of them. Y'all will love all of them. Yeah, yeah. What a blessing. What a blessing. Yeah, yeah. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah. If you're ever in here, they'll be, they'll be sending us their home address. They'll be sending us their home address. If any of y'all ever need a place to stay while you're out of town. <laughs> GPS. It's GPS. Praise God. And thank God for every one of you here. Let me ask you a question. How do you believe something significant was done in your life today? Let it be unto you according to your faith. In Jesus' name.